Brooklyn Independent Television. 11 months out of the year, Chris Soria and Mark Evan make a living as artists and illustrators. But every October, they're the maniac pumpkin carvers, cutting up hundreds of expertly crafted jack-o'-lanterns for an array of clients. Brooklyn Review dropped in on their Bushwick studio to see how they work their pumpkin magic and to gather some tips for the amateur carver. Pumpkins and pumpkin carving is a very American thing. People were carving turnips in Europe and that was related to All Hallows Eve, but pumpkins and pumpkin carving is as American as apple pie. Last season we did over 300 pumpkins. We're actually, in the interest of preserving our sanity, we're not trying to outdo last year's quantity. It's more about just doing the best product that we can put out. Me and Chris met when we were about 12 years old. Even as far back as high school, we were building community haunted houses and totally scaring all the kids in the neighborhood. We were scaring their parents, <laughs> actually. It was, it was a pretty fantastic haunted house. We got our start while we were both in art school, going from school to the bars that we were working at, bringing a couple of pumpkins to carve in the early hours of the shift when it was a little slower. And it kind of caught on. People would come in, freak out over our designs, and then start asking if they could get some and started placing orders. Before we knew it, we had to have a website and the Yankees were calling for 50 pumpkins for the World Series. It was a last minute phone call that we got saying, would you guys be able and interested in carving 50 pumpkins for game one of the World Series? And this was two days before game one. And you know, you don't say no to the Yanks. During the rest of the year, we are both professional illustrators. It's always different. It's always really interesting jobs. But it's, it's kind of fun to every year be able to take a break for the month of October and get messy with some pumpkins. All of our tools that we use are, for the most part, meant for other things. We use a lot of linoleum cutters that are typically used for printmaking, but we use them a lot for the pumpkins. We use clay loops that are usually for clay, but it scrapes away pulp really well. We get our pumpkins from a variety of local farms. This year though, it's been difficult because of Hurricane Irene. There were floods, a lot of the pumpkins in the Hudson Valley washed away. Farmers lost thousands of pumpkins. Instead of just using one farm, we've had to get batches from all over the place. One thing that runs parallel in terms of the art form with the pumpkins and our other work, you know, you start off seeing what you can accomplish and then you get to a point where you have a whole repertoire of techniques and approaches of things that you can do um, where now it's almost the sky's the limit. It's like not what can you do, but what do you want to do. It's most similar to ice sculpture or very temporary art installations in that it's meant to be appreciated in the moment and it's not something that is archival or going to last for a long time. We take pictures of the pumpkins and, and archive them that way, but the piece of art itself, it's, uh, it's going to rot. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.